What's going on, you bunch of heretics? Grab your paint pots, grab your recaf, and let's get some paint on that ever-growing pile of potential. It's here, the heresy is my therapy, slap chop tutorials. Now, I am introducing a new segment into these slap chop tutorials, because we're gonna be doing a complete faction focus. And what better way to start than with the new Tao Empire Kroot hunting pack um, with, of course, the new Tao Empire Codex. This is this is fantastic. And the Kroot models, I think they're going to lend themselves perfectly to slap chop. So what's going to happen? Well, over the next few episodes, specifically um, five, I think it's about five or six episodes, are all going to be designated dedicated to slap chopping each unit within the Kroot hunting pack and the uh, Far Stalker kin band as well, uh, with a few models we're gonna be doing in there. So today, starting off, we're gonna be doing three different Kroot carnivores. Uh, like I say, the Kroot lend themselves to some very nice um, shades and colors and textures. So what better way to start this sort of faction focus um, then with some crude carnivores, how you can batch paint and make them into your own. So yes, uh, as always, everything you need is in the description below. Uh, so yes, welcome to Harris is my therapy slap chop tutorials faction focus crude part one crude carnivores. Let's get to it. Oh, <laughs> slap. Okay then guys, welcome to it. So we've got our our Kroot Carnivores. I've got three different ones here. Uh, and before we begin, um, what we are going to do is we're going to get our, we're gonna get a, what's called a thon, Thondia, Thondia Brown. So Thondia Brown is gonna lend nicely to the range of what we're gonna create for all three of these. So we're gonna, we've already um, based these black. I've used the um, Army Army Painter Color Primer. Uh, this is their uh, their sort of matte black primer that I've used to prime these models. So first things first, we're going to get our Thondia Brown, give it a good shake, get some onto our palette, and we are just going to apply a thin layer of Thondia Brown onto the models. Okay. Like I say, this is a, a quite a decent brown, not too light, not too dark, lends itself nicely. And honestly, we're just going to do the entire model, getting in everywhere, all the crevices, all the hair, absolutely everything. Yeah, even the metal work makes no odds whatsoever. And we're going to apply this to all three of the models, okay? So yes, uh, granted it might feel like it's a little bit time consuming, um, but I know we'll see what slap is supposed to be all about is speed. And it is, you know, it's gonna be quite quick. Uh, you don't need to do all of the gun, maybe just uh, some of the, what would be woodwork, the rest of it you don't need to do. But make sure you get the arms, the body work, the legs, okay. So like I say, it's just a thin coat, nothing too wild, maybe maybe two thin coats perhaps. Duncan Rhodes it guys, Duncan Rhodes it, two thin coats. Just to sort of get that initial um, base layer on that's not just black. All right. Thondia Brown, I've got that right, haven't I? Yeah, Thondia Brown Applied. Yeah, Thondia Brown Applied, Applied, Applied. Like I say, I've got a thin coats, nothing too wild. And this is now gonna give us um, the effect or the assistance that we want uh, for our next phase of the slap chop. So we need to make sure that we've got it underneath all of the uh, the areas within uh, the model uh, so that you know we've got that little bit of darker brown texture. And this is kind of helping out with that deserty type theme as well. And we've done it for the other three, hopefully you can see those uh, down here. So, as always, we're now going to move on 
and use our Army Painter uh, Masterclass Moderate Dry Brush. And then we're going to use our Mechanica Standard Grey, Administratum Grey, Orthran Grey, and then finally White Scar. Now, as always with these, uh, we're going to use, like I say, if you've got a texture palette, um, I, I really like to use, um, I, I do prefer a good old bit of kitchen kitchen cloth uh, or kitchen paper uh, for my dry brushing. And uh, as always with all these, with all of these guys, yeah, same thing applied. Okay, so first things first, uh, our model's prepped. Yeah, looks like it's pretty much all dried. And now we're gonna begin the um, basing for our slap chop. Right then, kind of standard grey. As always, give it a good old shake. Grab my brush. Plenty on. Yep, nice old helping. Grab my kitchen roll. I'm just gonna take it all off. Just rub it in. And then what we're going to do is straight onto the model. Straight on there. Say so nice big old circles. Get it all on the model. Remember, it hasn't got to be neat. You are trying to get it absolutely everywhere. Just be gentle with it though, because it is a... It just, you can just circle, rotate it around. But as you can see, you can see the, the brown is in there quite nicely. You know, we haven't got that, um, that blank bottom that we've been used to having before. Uh, and that's been a bit of a, um, a bit of a contention for many of you guys about that, uh, at that base, at the bottom. Uh, I think that's gonna cover it quite nicely. just rotating it through all in there. Going to start on great. Next to go on. Again, straight on. Take it off. And you can either brush it through, peel it off. For me, I like to just brush it through and then there we go. Right in there, beautiful. And again, you know, small circles, just brush them around, just be mindful because they are a bit, you know, just feel like it's going to like fly straight off. And then you can still see that, that brown underneath, which is what we want. All right, because that will just blend nicely with the, the kind of earthy colors that we're trying to create with these uh, Crute Warriors. And remember, we are going to go lighter than you'd think, um, so that's okay. But remember, you know, if you want to dab and stab or stippling, I think I called it stippling. I didn't call it stippling. I think the community calls it stippling. Um, there we go. Uh, to be honest, with you, I think this this medium this medium brush does get most of it, um, but if we need to, we will just switch it over to the, uh, the smaller dry brush, just to kind of help it out a little bit. So we'll just switch it over. There it is, the smaller one, just to get into some of those little, those little gaps. Okay, so just in here, there we go. That's the one in his neck, in his hair. Bit more on the face. Like I say a bit more of a, a dab and stab stippling effect with this one. But you can just see oh, so it's kind of working out much better. Alright. And 
looking at the weapon as well, don't forget that. Don't forget that weapon. I'm just getting all these little areas that we just can't quite, quite see, but yeah. That's coming along quite nicely there, isn't it? Next up, Wolfram Crate. Okay, again, good old shake up. Again, in the routine. Onto our bigger brush. And then, like I say, just gonna take it off. Just, uh, you know, on your brush, just uh, small circles on your tissue and just with your fingers just take it off and then again all we're doing this is where now we're just going to where the light is getting everything okay so where the light would be shining we're not worried about going up the model he says we're more worried about where the the light is going to be shining and placed okay on the model really really heavy along the tops nice and heavy oh yep nice and heavy on the tops and again we're just the old dab and stab okay quick and easy and then we're gonna get our white scar um, and we're going to switch back to our smaller dry brush again. So again, just our, our white scar. A bit more on there. Load it up. And same again, just taking it all off. Okay, taking it all off. And then just circle those off. Small circles. Just kind of give it off. And then like I say, all we're going to do, just on the tips, and literally just picking out those final few highlights where the light would just catch the model. Okay. And that should be him. Repeat. Repeat and ready to go for the next one. Okay, so we're going to repeat that uh, two more times, okay? Nice and simple, pick up the, uh, the highlights with that, with those three, and you should be somewhere like that, ready to go. Right, so as we can see, we've got one uh, two and three all good to go so what we want to do first of all is we're going to get our lamia medium and we are going to get our skeleton horde um, you're also going to want what was it we did here? We're going to go with Creed Camo, and we're also going to have our classic Gore Grunt of Fur. We're actually going to put on all three of the models, we're going to put Skeleton Horde. We're going to put a light one over first, uh, then the model we're going to have is this. We'll do a few more layers of this, uh, and then we'll just follow on with the other ones for the other ones, for the other ones, for the other ones, if that makes sense. Uh, going to use my uh, STC layer medium from the Citadel and like I say on all the skin all we're going to do is just a 50-50 mix of Lamia medium okay Lamia medium and skeleton horde I'll tell you what I might just lower this down a bit for you guys yep Okay, and skeleton horde. Oh, mix it up properly. Jeep is done. Okay, and skeleton horde. Oh my god. Not the best start, is it really? Right, where were we? Yep. 
put Odin, mix it in there. Mix it in nicely and all we're gonna do is just in all the skin, in all of the skin only, we're just gonna apply this to all three of the models, okay? So only into the skin. Luckily with this, because it's quite light, if you do get on everyone out everywhere else, it doesn't matter too much. Okay, but the key area that we want is gonna be like the kind of the turtle front. Okay, that's where we're gonna be keeping this, this color. Okay, the beaks as well. For your murder chickens, if you will. Okay. So remember, nice and light, you only need for the time being, because we will come back to it. Just one thing there, in all of the skin, on all of the models, this will just give like a bit of a, a nice little highlight to our our crew carnivores. Okay. Cool. So as you can see in front of us, I have allocated here a paint for a, a color scheme for each one of these. Uh, so this guy, he's going to stay on the. He's going to remain um, with the skeleton horde. And we're going to go back over him in a moment. Uh, but first of all, we're going to do uh, these two um, first of all. So I'm going to get my Gorgon to Fur Guy. And this is where we have to be a little bit more delicate with our painting. Okay. So, yep, Gorgon to Fur. And again, I need my Lamia Medium. Um, give it a good old shake up. Uh, and again, all I'm doing now is very simply. A very light layer very very light so again a bit of a 50 50 mix of lime and medium and my gorgon to fur uh, and like i say this time yeah 50 50 and all i'm gonna do now is just lightly apply this over the skin so he's going to be quite an interesting one really because he's going to look a little bit like the leather that we end up applying. So we want to really get into everywhere. Okay, but we're just nice and thin, just nicely applying it all over the skin now. Okay, so again, we don't want to be letting this pool anywhere. Okay, this just needs to be a nice, nice look all over the model. Don't worry about the claws. They can stay the bleach plane. The bleach the bleach but the bleached bone the skeleton horde. But the rest of it mm, we'll get back to those chains and claws and bits and pieces in a bit. But the actual skin itself, gorgon to fur, just all over the model. Nice and easy. Take your time with it. Remember the old classic paint by numbers. Easy as that. All right. And again, you know, we don't have to do the, the beak. We can leave that. Um, but if you want to, you can do, but I'm gonna just leave that beak, I think. Oh, I might actually, nah, be all right. So yeah. Okay. And we can start to see him taking his colorful form. Okay, the Gorgon to fur has been applied to this guy, and I think that is not a bad little start um, for uh, a bit of variety. So, uh, next up, we've got our Camo Creed one. Okay, so same again, Camo Creed, and our Lamium Medium, shake it up. Just place, place it on our our pad, on our wet palette. Probably should have said that at the start, really, shouldn't I? A wet palette. And again, I'm just 50-50 in this. Nice and light. Nothing wild. All right, troops. And again, all we're doing is we're just straight onto the model. Nice and light. Just watching that colour change happen 
don't want it pooling but again we're just seeing the model turn into a bit more of a green greenish hue over in that's the joy about that skeleton horde is it just gives you like a bit of an undertone highlight that you wouldn't have got so we've got that that brown going into the the greys and then of course now we have this really quite cool green that's just mixing the model up a little bit and again go as dark or as, as light as you want to um, yeah go as dark or as light as you want to but I just think that having that bit of that camo green net just breaks it up real nicely and like I say the, these contrast paints they just lend themselves really nicely to just pooling in slightly here well not pooling but um sitting in the recesses just really really nicely over certain uh, over certain colours and like I say we always work light to dark most of the time with this with slap chop for this exact reason because now we've been able to create a bit more depth and colour working from other colours okay so there we go that's pretty much on there done I'm just leaving this at the front scales, the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, Hurtle, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle scales on the front as the, uh, the light colour. But yeah, there you go. So now we have all three all done. I'm going to go back to my original guy and just give him another little once over of Skeleton Horde. And then we're going to start with the, uh, because we're, we're um, because we are patch painting and um, we're going to then put the base on next all right so i'm going to add another layer on layer on to him uh, just to give him a bit more of a uh, a bit more of a texture and then we're going to start to add bits and pieces to it okay okie dokie folks yep so i've just done my extra little layer of uh skeleton hood on that original guy so uh, i'm now going to put the base on to allow that to dry when i do the sort of recess areas of the models i'm going to be using Aguilan Earth, Aguilan Earth Technical, uh, and this is simple enough, is literally just, um, I use, what am I doing here, probably should have had this prepared earlier on, uh, I like to just use a bit of a medium brush, a little bit of water on it, uh, and all I'm going to do is just get this, and I'm wanting to create a deserty effect, is the kind of theme I'm going to go with for my guys here. So all we're going to do, we're just going to stick it on nice and thick onto the base of all three of these, okay? And while we're painting the model, this will just dry rather nicely. Um, this will just dry rather nicely while we're painting the model. And then by the time we get to, uh, get to it, and it'll be done. So this is just a bit of a, a time saving exercise for your models, especially when you're batch painting and you're pretty much going to go with a generic base. Again, because we've got these earthy tones, it just kind of suit the the crew, the crew hunting pack nicely. A deserty tone uh, is what we're going to go with for the theme. All right. And then this, when, as this dries, it will like crack. And you can make bigger cracks by making this thicker, um, less cracks, or thinner cracks. Sorry, thinner cracks. Um, by having it thinner. So thick will make it bigger cracks. Thin will be little cracks. Okay? And again, we're going to do that for all three of our models. Right then, so this next part we're going to do is basically the color that you had we're going to apply the next shade or the next sort of contrast in darkness up so for our skeleton horde i'm going to go back over with 
a very very thin layer of gorgon de fer with the gorgon de fer i'm going to go with a very thin of cycle brown and with camera green i'm going to go with dark angels green okay uh, and all this is going to do is just going to sit nicely in the recesses now when i say extremely thin layer i mean a very 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 thin layer we're talking um our original mixes um adding plenty of Lamian medium into those mixes. Again, I'll go into there. Okay, so I'm talking extremely, extremely thinned out. Okay, so more like a three parts Lamian medium to one part. Okay, to one part. Um, Gorgon de Fer. We want to take as much of it off the brush as we can. So like I said, we're just going to sit them in nice and light, nothing wild. All we're doing is just adding a little bit of depth, a bit of shade into the model. Okay. Again, just really, really thin. Because don't worry, because maybe when we apply that sandry dust. Okay, we'll get that nice little shine back on the model anyway. I think for this guy, it's going to be more like a straight off with a shapty bone, to be honest. But yeah, really, really thin. Just super, super light. We really want this in the sort of the, the, the crevices, though. That's where we do want it. Okay, so we do want it in the crevices. Okay, but again, super, super light with it. This shouldn't be thick. It should just be a slight change in the color. Okay, just a slight change in the color. Nothing mental. Now, as you can see, our base is drying up nicely. All right. Okay, but again, just in the face. nice and light there we go in the hands done okay that is literally that is literally all it needs to be hopefully you can see that okay that slight change that we've made into him take him off apply our next guy now remember this is batch painting batch painting 101 a lot of filling around, isn't there? Oh, right. Remember, Saigor Brown is a very, very, very dark color. It's very heavy. So this really needs to be a massive amount of, you know, three, three or four parts, very heavy amount of Lamia Medium and just a dollop, just a, just a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of Saigor Brown. If you get this wrong, this is going to be super, super dark. So again, we want to take loads of it off the brush. And we're just very, very lightly applying it into the model. Just to give us a bit more depth and texture. Okay. I'm just ignoring the beak there. I'm keeping the beak uh, the original colour. But again, just very quickly. Nothing wild in the recesses in the recesses back in again we just it's very very quick this it's very quick it's just to add a bit of depth into the shadows into the recesses again we're not putting anything heavy into this this is super quick and easy all right Super quick, super easy. And again, I'm not being too neat with it, but I'm just going over those areas where I really want it to be. Okay? Just in those areas where I really want it to be, and already you can just see that, that darkening kind of happening there. All right, cool. Wash the brush off. 
model out. Next little change. Here he is, the old little green boy here. So Dark Angel's green, again, bit of a shank. And again, we're just gonna just pop this into our little area where we had the green earlier. And again, plenty of lamium medium in there. Plenty. Again, more like a three three to one mix. A three to one mix of lamium medium and dark angels green. And again, we're just taking it off the brush. And again, we're just very quickly all over the model. Super quick, super easy. Don't let it pull. It's just giving that model a little bit of a nice, a little nice bit of color into it. Just something different. Again, leave the beak if you want. Put it in the beak. Oh, I'm gonna leave it. But again, it's it's again. It's just a real quick once over the model. Okay. Nothing's nothing's pulling. Pushing the paint around, as with as with as with all the slap chop that we've done. Okay, I apologize. This is quite a long bit, but hopefully you can do it with us, and you can see just how quick and easy this is. That's the aim, anyway. Whew. And you just see that kind of just change a little bit. All right, you'll just see that color change ever so slightly and there you go okay this is going to be another one of those where it's going to be a pretty much the same thing for everything it's going to be the leather work so the leather work on here uh, I'm going to use it as a weapon um, the sort of like wrapping on the weapon the sling um, some of his and his and his pouches all right and this is basically going to be um to fur Again, a bit more heavier than we have on the other stuff uh, with a sort of like a recess of slight gore brown. Okay, so again, we don't really need to be too light with this. This can almost be pretty much not straight from the part, but it's not gonna be light like it was for when we were doing the skin. So maybe a, I don't know, two to one of side gore brown to, uh, sorry, gorgon to fur to lamium medium. Um, and again, we're just gonna, this will be a couple of coats in all fairness. And again, all we're doing, we're just gonna, I like to use this ooh, as the, um, for the leather work. Oh, actually that could be a bit darker. And I'm thinking I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. That's right. My apologies there, troops. My apologies indeed. Yeah. I'm going to keep that a bit thicker actually. It'll be a three to one. As you can see, it's kind of pulled a little bit down here. But we want this to be that's a little bit. Don't worry, it will be darker. This is one of those where we're on the belts, on the pelting. Probably just on there as well. Okay, so all we're doing is just on all this, we're just gonna go side rum to get the leather work on there, all the belts, all the belts. As you can see, that's easy enough there. Um, yeah, the leather work on the front as well. I don't worry, this will make sense once we start putting the side brown into it as well. Okay. So again, it will break it up nicely. Don't worry. And then what we're going to do on the gun casing, this will make sense again as well. I'm just going to place that on here. This is all wooden work. That's wood and strapping. And then again on here as well. Just be mindful, keeping it in there. Okay. 
Now once we've got that done, we'll do apply the rest of it to all the other models, and then we'll apply the Saigor Brown into that as well. All right, let's do it. Okay, here we go. So we've done our, so as you can see, there's a lot of very earthy tones in all of this, which is great. Um, obviously this one here is very much in the eye of the, of the detail of stuff here. Um, so it's almost gonna look like he's just one color, um, but hopefully, um, hopefully you'll be able to see that will break up nicely soon. So we've got two things to do here. Uh, first things first, we are going to do our Saigo Brown into all the leather work. Um, and then after that, we are going to get our Agrax Earthshade and we're gonna place it um, into the base. In fact, I'll probably say Agrax Earthshade first, um, but for the time being, uh, I'll just show you what we're gonna do with our Saigo Brown. Um, so again, this is a classic sort of recess sort type thing. Um, go with the original mix from earlier on. Please remember that Saigo Brown is a very, very, very dark contrast paint. So again, you can just one-to-one -one this. Uh, take a lot of it off the brush. Uh, and all you're doing is just, again, into the woodwork. You can make this as dark as you want to, or as light. Um, and again, same again, into the leather work of your model. So again, into the leather work, just to break it up nicely. And this just sits in here really, really nice to kind of create a nice leathery effect that we'll get round to dry brushing very, very shortly. We're almost there. We're almost there. So again, just in all the recesses, nice and light, nothing wild. And again, you can make this as dark or as light as you want to. But again, we're just trying to make this uh, into a bit of a leathery and wood effect with our model, with our uh, Saigo Brown. All right. And then once we've done that and we're happy with all those little recessy bits we've got in the handles and the and the pouches etc and the sling is weapon sling we're going to do the same for all the other models okay we're going to do the same for all the other models and then we're going to just go grab our inside there oh, apologies so again you can make it as dark or as light as you want to okay then all we're going to do from there we're just going to grab our our Agrax Earthshade grab our shade brush okay. grab our shade brush grab some Agrax Earthshade And you know the routine. Good old Agrax Earthshade. Straight into the base of the model. Okay. And it shouldn't take too long for that to dry. Because we're gonna need it shortly for our, yep, for our, uh, our models. Okay. So, as I say, if you want to, uh, in the weapon system, and you wanna add bit of the Agrax Earthshade in there, just to kind of really darken the wood of the weapon system to kind of separate it out. You know what? Let's do that as well. So we'll put the Agrax Earthshade in there as well, just for the actual um, furnishings or the housing of the weapon system. All right. Right, let's do that for the uh, for the others. Okay, next up we're gonna need Black Templar, Shyish Purple, 
and Blood Angels Red. So all this is going to be is just kind of for the spikes of the fur on their on their heads. And again, we're just going to go with a classic. We just need a bit of a little bit of the old Lamia medium. And all we're doing first of all, getting our Blood Angels Red. And we're just going to just near the ends, just halfway up. So this is like, this is just for like my kind of crew carnival wall band, really. I'm just going to have a little bit of red in there. So it would be red. I want to do this when it's relatively wet as well. Okay. So again, sorry for that. So red. red again you can use whatever you want to but um these are just like my kind of markings for my geezers shyish purple shake it up shake it off yep shyish purple again just next to the mix yeah just a drop of lamia medium nothing much And again, I'm going to go right down to the base, about halfway up, a bit more in there actually, a bit darker, throw that out. Yep, down to the base, halfway up, just mix it all in, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I want to just kind of merge these together, a little bit of a weird, like a little wet blending effect on them. Maybe you make it a bit darker, go a bit, a bit higher if you want to. It hasn't got to be neat. It hasn't got to be neat at all. Okay, it hasn't got to be neat at all. These just like say, these are my markings, you can call them whatever, whatever you want. Do whatever you like. Live. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I'm happy with that. Quite a cool little effect. And then finally, just at the kind of at the base of all, your black Templar. Okay, again, it's quite a heavy set colour. So again, we're just gonna a bit more lamy like medium than expected in there. And again. Just at the base, at the base. Nice and dark. Okay. Might take a little bit because it's quite wet. All right. So might have to thicken it up a little bit, perhaps. Maybe a bit touch, a touch more in there. Okay. Touch darker, just to kind of seal it off nicely. Okay. Yeah. Well, folks, it is that time of the video where we use our Zandri dust and potentially a little bit of Ushabti bone, uh, and of course you're gonna need a fresh bit of towel and your good old small dry brush. Okay. Oh yes. What is it? We can clean that out. Yeah, it's good to go. Yes, and your small dry brush. Uh, so, um, as always with this, it is a a feather dusting, a feathered touch, if you will, an absolute feathered feathered touch is is what we're after. Um, with the Zandri dust into our models. Hopefully you can now see this have all taken a bit of shape and now this will just add that final little bit of depth to what we're trying to uh, achieve. So again, Zandri Dust, give it a good old shake off as we do with all of our pinks. And you want plenty on the brush. And as always, we're gonna just take absolutely loads of it off. 
Um, I'm switching back to the Citadel dry brush as opposed to the iron painter one. And first things first, we're just going to along the bottom. Okay, along the bottom, we're just going to just go over our base. Okay. So first things first, we're just going to go over our base. Okay, and then we're just going to slowly, and I mean very slowly, we're going to work up the rest of the model. And you will just start to see that gradual change. Okay, absolutely everywhere. And I mean, this is just nice and slow, taking our time. Let the dry brush do its job. Okay. Just let the dry brush do its job. You'll see that the model is really just starting to change. The highlights are coming in nicely. And it just takes off any of that if there's like any sort of like blotchiness within the model it all kind of just goes away okay a bit more around the face and again just get in some of those areas that you probably didn't get before and any areas that you want to just kind of touch upon but again like a minimal pressure Okay, minimal pressure with this. Minimal pressure. This is just a feathered, feathered touch. Now for this guy, we are gonna just do a little layer of Ushapti bone, just real light. Again, nothing wild on the brush. Take loads of it off. And we really want to concentrate just again if we need to just go on the ground first of all if I take a bit more off and then we're just going to really focus on the skin of this guy okay there we go look at him he is not bad at all eh? Not bad at all. Not bad at all. There we go. Right, as always is, that's um, rinse and repeat for the other ones. We are almost there, guys. We are almost there. So um, all I've done is... Uh, for the next little bit, I just kind of added a bit of Agrex Earth Shade just into the eye sockets. Um, I think it just kind of what works quite well for the uh, for the aesthetic of the model. So I'm just going to leave it as that. All we need to finalise is we're going to get some. Uh, we just need some Iron Warriors Agrex Agrex Earth Shade um, and some Storm Host Silver is all we're going to need for the next sort of part. Uh, and then that'll be that the model done. And all I'm going to do is just uh, create a bit of basing using the Army Painter um, starter kit, where I just use um, the sort of green tufts that are in it, some pebbles and some cork, uh, and that will finish off the model. Uh, and then finally, I'll add the Thondoria, Thondoria Brown um, around the bottom of the base. Um, but yes, for the time being, we are going to just go with our Iron Warriors first of all. And this is going to get in all the metal work that we want. Okay, so all the metal work. Uh, again, we don't need to mix anything just onto our wet palette. Um, and again, just very nicely, all we're doing is just painting um, on the edges here. Nothing too wild. And that's all we're doing there. Okay, on there. On his plating uh, for this guy because he's got some. Uh, and then 
we just kind of go around the rest of the weapon okay so again the gun casings the blades of the weapon let's put one in there so we've got quite what we're after put a bit in there again just a few thin layers nothing wild nice and simple um, and again just in all the gun casings and all around here on the blade uh, and then what you can also do if you if you're so inclined get a smaller brush and all of the kind of arm bits of jewelry we're just gonna just go around those as well so any sort of like arm jewelry work wristbands um, anything we uh, in the hair they've got these little like these little bits in it as well uh, and then of course on the back we've got the the knife we're gonna just paint that just straight silver all right just straight silver no pun of course so they great tanith first but again so yeah, run all the model, get all the uh, the gunmetal parts done, and that'll be that. Okay. Right then, that's the uh, that's the silver all in there, and all three, uh, all done. So just to kind of keep with the kind of, um, with the the look, the rustic look, if you will, we're gonna get some liquid talon, the old Agrax Earthshade, as we said a moment ago, and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put that into all of the metal work okay so all of the metal work we've just done we're literally just going to quickly just send that agrax air shade into it all okay it will make sense in a minute because we're going to nice and lightly dry brush over with um we're going to lightly dry brush over with um the storm host silver all right on those areas but for the time being, everywhere, all in the, uh, all in the gun work, just a little bit of Agrax Earthshade, it will just kind of give it a bit of um, not a rusty effect. That's not what we're going for, but a bit more grimy, or a bit more of like the kind of the the crew aesthetic, really. Um, I think the normal would be just a bit too, just wouldn't look right. So we're gonna break it with a bit of good old liquid talent agrax earth shade good old agrax earth shade and besides if we get it into the model it won't matter because it will it will fit nicely into the aesthetics all right so in all the metal work just grab yourself some agrax earth shade and just get it in all the metal work all right, that's the next thing to do. Final part before we base it properly, we're gonna get our Stormhost Silver. Give us a real good shake up. And again, we're just gonna grab just a little bit, not loads. And all we're gonna do is just gonna, just gonna polish over those areas that the, uh, the metal kind of sat on. So all we're doing is just literally the barrel now what we are going to do is just over the furnishings we're just going to add a bit of air so it's like it's a bit not bronzed but it's like um almost like it's maybe been chipped away at a little bit all right and here on the knife and then just on the shoulder pad. Okay. And that is literally as easy as that. Again, really simple, really effective, quick and easy, nothing wild. All right, we'll get the same for this done now. 
Well then guys, there we have it, there they are, all done, all in their glory, all finished. So hopefully you can see that okay. There we've got our, our green geezer, our, I like the skeleton horde type, lighter one, and of course our brown dark browns all done and in there um, and that is our part one our crude carnivores um, kind of done there guys let me know what you think uh, in the comments below has this been a helpful tutorial to help you batch paint your crude carnivores uh, if so let me know love to hear about it uh, and stay tuned for parts two, three, four, and five. Um, up next will be Crute Hounds. So yeah, look forward to that one. Uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Um, it all helps towards the, the, the page. And uh, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this. I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye.